Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Presiding Officer. And let, uh, let me say I, I value the contribution of everyone uh, who, who's uh, spoken tonight. And seldom on such an issue uh, that is widely held to be controversial have I heard such a broad unanimity uh, that uh, something needs to be done and that uh, responsibility needs to be delivered uh, to this place and from this place to communities elsewhere. And let me say that's where uh, I wish us to go. Now, Scotland sees, and of course the Crown Estate is in Scotland largely, if not exclusively, uh, about our coastline, unlike in the rest of the UK where it's very largely uh, about urban investments, are a very important part of our natural assets and part of our economic assets, and they're important to our economy, particularly uh, in the world of uh, renewable energy. And we need control over our seabed to manage it properly and exploit our country's important marine uh, assets. And I think the, the, the message from the debate is the status quo is not defensible. And that really is what the House of Commons report, which I too commend, uh, for its clarity of purpose and uh, clarity of articulation of, of, of the, the, the issue. Now, there have been a lot of contributions. I'll try and cover as many points that have been raised as uh, time will uh, permit. Um, David Stewart, in his contribution, uh, talked about Highland, uh, Shetland, and uh, the Corleys harbours, and indeed um, uh, reference was made to harbours again uh, by Tavis Scott. And, and, and let me simply join by saying uh, that the board at Peterhead Harbour have made exactly these same points, that they build a new uh, breakwater and they find that their contribution rises uh, significantly as a result of an investment that they make, uh, w w which seems quite uh, unreasonable to them, uh, as it does uh, to many of us. Uh, so, Mary Scanlon uh, made reference to Udo Law. Um, I, I'm not sure that touched on the issue uh, that we have here. Uh, I, too, have uh, talked to Peter Peacock, uh, late of this place, um, uh, on issues uh, that Community Land Scotland uh, pursues, uh, and, and we listen carefully to what is said there. And, of course, Community Land Scotland is all about returning power uh, to local communities, and I very much look forward uh, to working with Peter and with Community Land Scotland more generally uh, on continuing uh, the reformation uh, of our, uh, our, land, uh, our land laws. We need to get assets devolved to local communities, the phrase uh, that uh, David Stewart uh, used. Um, Jim Eady talked about a forensic analysis of the Crown Estate, and I think that's absolutely fair. Key decision is that it's not uh, fit for, uh, for purpose. He, he highlighted the lack of hard information, and I think that is a, a fair point to make. And I think I return to uh, some of the points that uh, Tavish not unreasonably targeted at me, but I would say that one of the things we do not know, for example, is the individual rentals that perhaps comparable fish farms or comparable harbours may pay. We do know uh, from various information that they do vary because the Crown Estate operates as a commercial operator and will get from a developer what it can in, in the way of resource. And one of the things we need to understand is exactly what the breakdown, uh, the breakdown is. Uh, one small area in the report from the committee that uh, I, I'll just make a wee comment about, largely it talks about the Scottish Government being where they're devolving to. But of course, if you devolve to the Scottish Government, you're probably talking about administrative devolution, in other words, giving ministers powers to do things. Whereas I think the consensus of the debate and the intention of this government would be that actually we need legislative devolution to the Scottish Parliament so that we can legislate for the appropriate frameworks for devolution uh, on uh, to uh, local uh, communities. I'm not going to pursue the points on Her, Her Majesty's interests. I think I'd just get bogged down if I was to do, do that, although I will read uh, the relevant act with interest, of which I was certainly not aware or previously briefed. Um, Chip Brody talked about land belonging to the people and referred to Lloyd George. Um, as you would expect, I'll just make a personal claim. My father was Lloyd George's last election agent in 1942 when he stood for the rectorial ship 
uh, of uh, the University of Edinburgh. So my father did know Lloyd George. Um, um, <laughs> I, I think Tavish Scott said there's an opportunity to make the case. I actually, I think really the case has been made. Tonight we are debating the case uh, that has been made. And what I hope will happen is that the uh, the Secretary and the UK Government will look at the content of this debate, the contributions from all uh, the different political flavours in this Parliament, uh, and tack tent of the serious intent that there is clearly shared across the Chamber. Uh, that we should, very briefly, if I may, Tavis I just absolutely agree with the point he's just made, but uh, given that he can't, uh, and I understand this, set out the detail of how he would achieve devolution to a local level, could he set out even a time scale? Has the government given any thought to how long that might take so that we could give some comfort to these coastal communities? Minister? Well, in, in fairness, the thing that could be done early is um, making sure that the communities have access to the money. That's something that I think you know, we can do relatively straightforwardly. Um, getting a, a legislative framework or an administrative framework that gives people access to the levers of power, I think is something that we do need to look at further. I think uh, one of the things that uh, it, it came up that, that Tavish asked about, what would the rates for salmon farms be? And I think we shouldn't automatically assume they would be much lower, because of course many of the interests in exploiting our offshore resources, such as salmon farms, are foreign owned. And it's quite reasonable that we should extract a price from these foreign interests but ensure that the revenue uh, is accessible uh, to uh, local communities. Now, I, um, I am running out of time. I will say I'm going to have to read the official report very carefully because I'm not quite sure that uh, Jamie uh, McGregor's uh, delineation of uh, uh, how capital works uh, was not, uh, not entirely clear to me, but uh, I'll read it again later. I think the message that should go out from tonight is to the Secretary of State to act on the evidence that's been produced uh, by the Westminster Committee's report. We've written to the Secretary of State for Scotland seeking a meeting uh, on the back of that, and in parallel we'll, we'll continue to press for devolution of the Crown Estate. Presiding officer, I think it has been a, a very useful debate. I haven't been able to respond to everything uh, that has been said. If anyone uh, feels uh, a pressing need to have more information, I'm happy to supply it uh, if, if you contact me. Presiding officer. Thank you very much, Minister. That concludes David Stewart's debate, and I now close this meeting of Parliament.